I'm ready. Oh, let me, I'm going to turn all my lights off and then just kind of walk in. What the heck? Okay. This is on. You don't have to worry about it. Oops, not that one. All right, Gary. Well, thank you. See you in a little bit. Hi there. Hey, welcome to Harper's Barbershop. Come on inside. I'm gonna go turn some lights on, all right? So this is the inside of Harper's Barbershop. Uh, I've got lots of different things going on. Very eclectic, uh, very eclectic space. Um, so I've been working on this for about three and a half years uh, while also cutting hair and doing other design work, some small run manufacturing. Uh, so let me get started here. Uh, Maybe we'll start with this light here. Uh, this light was uh, inspired by uh, Buckminster Fuller. Uh, very cool dude. Um, so uh, I built this, this lamp by using uh, a, uh, a form uh, that I made with silicone and then uh, basically took all these little tiny uh, cuts of uh, tubing and then welded them together. Uh, and then I had the whole thing powder coated and then wired up. I had some help from some fantastic friends of mine. Uh, Steve Martin Cohen is one of them who's kind of helped, helped to uh, make sure I had the right resistors and everything like that during this thing. So uh, always get a lot of help from other people uh, for these things. So, so the next thing I like to talk about uh, is, uh, right here, this, this wall, this wall right here. Uh, most of the things that uh, I designed in this space started off as uh, shapes, for instance, like where things are gonna go. I didn't know exactly what they were gonna look like uh, at first. Um, but after looking at the certain shapes and uh, uh, sort of deciding what to do with this, with uh, with also the amount of time that I had, uh, decided to put uh, certain things together uh, eclectically. You know, um, so here is a wall that I made look like uh, an old chest. Uh, 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 an old, uh, I forget exactly what kind of chest that's called, but so this these these pieces here open and close like this and uh, then uh, over over here um, this here also opens and closes uh, th this here was vacuum formed I had a uh, I built a, a form and I vacuum formed this piece and I vacuum formed this piece and then I kind of put them together. So you can kind of look inside and see. Some of the, what I really like to be able to do is uh, have different people's artwork in here. So it's also uh, a potential gallery space uh, for artists to sell their, their wares um, and for me to sell my stuff too. Um, so let's take a look here. Over here, for an example, I have uh, a friend of mine, uh, Brian Brian Valinic, who who's taken these photographs of the plants. He goes he goes uh, hiking and all kind. He's always out in the woods uh, searching for like uh, mushrooms, like the, the chicken one or whatever that is. 
and then he finds he finds these images and posts but within with on this with inside of this this is what I call my um, this is what I call the art scoop so it kind of scoops up artwork it's kind of like the concept uh, and inside of there are LEDs and then it so what I wanted to do is make sure that the light shined inward so as to keep this area here kind of dark and to keep uh, the area where I work light it's kind of like you got the smoking kind of um, uh, what would you call that like a cigar joint type of place or like a bar so it's kind of relaxing on this side and working and aesthetically um, I guess you would say cleansed uh, so it looks clean so anyways behind behind the art scoop are uh, barnwood barnwood doors uh, that I picked up very uh, uh, they're very uh, um, I guess you could say uh, in right now <laughs> uh, so also over on over on uh, this side here uh, this 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 is a, a reclaimed part of a coal mine uh, and then I put I put the mirrors in there to kind of give it uh, more space you know make it look like there's more space in the in the in the space um, uh, as you can see I also uh, reclaimed these are old silk screens so um, up on these on these pieces here and then I created the I guess you could call it the lampshade uh, where uh, basically had these these pieces cut out and uh, placed them in this form and then uh, screwed those together um, and then here's a, an airplane that my grandfather built a while back so it's kind of bringing in a little bit of my history um, so on to some other stuff um, so right here uh, you can see I built this this cabinet here um, as the shape so that the chair can swivel easily and yet uh, you still have you still have a drawer uh, where you can put things and then you have a vacuum system inside of here and you're able to like hose, hose, thing, hose people off um, and then put that back inside of there like that and then it shuts off automatically uh, underneath here is actually um, a blue LED light that if there's any bacteria on it eventually does kill it uh, so this is a blower and this is the vacuum this here with the shape I was I, I think I was inspired by uh, I think I was inspired by um, uh, would you call that the lights uh, stop and go lights um, and then eventually I'll be putting some things inside of here also um, as you can see here uh, maybe you can and or can't uh, I have uh, hairdos on this side and uh, and on this side here I have examined so I have examined hairdos and it's a mirror of course and then I I put the uh, I put this up here like that and also this this moves like this so that you can get back inside of here now let me take you with me here for a second so back here is where you get down there as you can see you can get to the vacuum and then here's where a coat rack is going to go um, now I'm going to put you back here all right now on to some other stuff here so this this here like uh, is uh, this piece here is I call it the elephant in the room uh, it was actually inspired by Alexander Calder uh, who uh, always used these bright colors 
So I get here in their primary colors. So I use a blue, yellow, orange, and uh, also uh, inspired by the time that he was he was around. So kind of like this this airplane kind of look to it also. Um, but in in this piece also there's some used artifacts. Uh, the cent the center table here uh, is actually from an old science uh, lab in a high school. Uh, we've got these these cabinets here that inside as you can see uh, these are old pans I believe they're from the steel mill and then I have them uh, sort of framed inside the drawer face uh, so that it kind of gives them um, I don't know, some sort of special uh, feel to them. And then, uh, but also, it makes them, it makes them um, more like a, a, a photograph behind a piece of glass. So it's, it, it kind of gives it that feel of, uh, it, it, it sort of frames it out. Like, it, it, like if, there, if it wasn't like a piece of, of uh, plexiglass in front of it, it may not feel finished, you know? Uh, so also here, um, as you can see, this these open this opens up here, and that's where the the garbage is. As you can see, it's it's full. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that opens up, and uh, if, if actually I don't know whether you actually saw that or not, but this these this opens up like this, and that's where the garbage is. Uh, here is basically like this space here is so like if a, a barber is working they have they have space for their computer to look at the monitor and, and that type of thing um, now above here as you can see like I built I built this this is all out of aluminum um, and uh, what I did was I created forms that I pounded the aluminum over and then used a shrinker and a stretcher to get those correct. And then I used rivets to put it together. And then inside of there are LEDs. And then I put a, uh, uh, an opaque, uh, not an opaque, but yeah, is that right, an opaque? Uh, uh, the light behind it. So I leave this, leave this on all night long so when people are driving by, they can see Welcome to Harper's Barbershop. Um, and then also this, not only does it, is it a sign but it also is uh, the the way in which I'm able to get water to come in so um, so I have water lines coming down inside of here where you kind of have this sort of steampunk look to things and uh, as you can see the water flows and then uh, also you uh, so when it goes when it when the water goes in it goes into these uh, these are old washing tubs, probably, I don't know, from the 30s or something like that. And what I did was uh, put a stainless steel uh, sink inside of it. Um, so, uh, basically, I, I would have had to have drilled a hole into this tub, and I didn't really want to, uh, to do that. Um, as you can see, as you can see, over here, there you could also see the 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 uh, drawers inside also, kind of having that airy sort of look to it. So what did we cover here? Um, as you can see, uh, here is an old. This is an old barber pole. When I was living in New York, I uh, took my mom and dad around years ago. It was like. 15, no, almost 20 years ago. Uh, and uh, my dad saw this pole when he, he bought it in New York. But this thing is, this thing is a really nice, uh, nice piece. All right, on to some other stuff here. So as you can see, I have, I have, you know, on the same side, it's sort of reflective. It's the same, the same light. Uh, I built two of them. Um, As you can see here, oh, you know what? One of the things I forgot to show you is um, is uh, how I have how I have these uh, these clippers set up, right? So with these clippers set up, 
uh, often uh, before we, we had the clippers set up and, the, and, the, and the, the cords would be plugged into here. But what would happen is, is that these, these cords would be on the ground. So oftentimes what you do is you would be walking and you'd kick this cord. So one thought that I had was, well, why don't I just hook this up this way and I'll never have, I'll, I'll, I won't, I won't drop, drop the, the clippers. So anyways, uh, surprisingly, it's actually worked out quite well. Um, uh, I've been using them for a while. It's, they sometimes get tangled up, but, but it beats like dropping uh, a pair of clippers, you know, uh, you know, $60, $70 for a new pair of clippers. Um, so that's probably saved me a little bit of money over the time that I've been working. <laughs> Um, uh, let's see, is there anything else here? No, nah, I think we're good. Uh, let me see. So mu much of this stuff I, I uh, much of this stuff I built, um, I didn't necessarily um, build the, uh, the chairs, you know, but you know, you sort of f f feeling out like what would, what would really look, what would look nice. And so a lot of the stuff I buy on Craigslist, like, like these chairs here, these blue chairs over here, I bought these on Craigslist. And uh, um, also uh, the, uh, the leather chairs also I bought on Craigslist. So it's like, you know, you try to keep, keep things uh, reasonably uh, inexpensive. Um, if there was better light in here, I'd actually show you, I'd actually show you the carpet down here. Um, uh, there's actually a, a, a resin uh, floor here. Uh, what I did was I covered a, a, a rug, like an old, um, what do they call those, like an Asian rug? Uh, a Turkish rug in, in like 17 gallons of resin. It's kind of hard to see here, but I'm going to dip, dip you down here and show you. Okay. So, anyways, on to some other stuff. As you can see here, I got, I got uh, some sculptures here, and that's one of the things that I, that my, my, my grandfather uh, made this sculpture here, and then he owned this sculpture over here. So I like to keep that sort of like personalized stuff. Um, eventually, uh, I'm going to have a few sculptures here. I had these chimpanzees that I worked on that will eventually be finished. Um, so, uh, what, what else can I show you here? Um, now, I am totally uh, stoked about these cabinets. These cabinets are, it's a display cabinet. Uh, this was inspired by uh, um, Darwin. Uh, so I was exploring, I was exploring, uh, first let me explain this. Now the reason I put these here was because I have a lot of, a lot of older, older clients, right? So when they walk in, I wanted them to be secure and make it, uh, this, uh, so, so they wouldn't, they wouldn't necessarily get hurt or they could actually see that there was a step here and they'd also have something to hold on to when they walk down the stairs. So at that time, I just had like the shape of what was going to go here, and I didn't know exactly what to uh, what to do. And uh, I find um, evolution to be very interesting. You know, things take time, uh, and things take pressure, and things take you know uh, a long time to develop and change uh, to get us to where we are now. So I, I find it to be very inspiring. So that's the reason why I made these. So in here, this is where uh, artwork will be, will be had, uh, where I you know, sell different pieces of, of artwork from different people from around. So I wanted to show that, but I also want to, uh, in this, this moment, sort of explain uh, how this was, this was made. So I designed it in the computer and then built, this is a uh, this is, uh, I believe, um, I think this is cherry here, and this is oak, and then I stained this, and then these, this is this here is uh, brass, and I welded, but I welded it kind of like 
It was the first time I was welding uh, sheet brass, and there's a lot of distortion with it. But I also kind of found that I, I liked the look. It's kind of like rough hewn, you know. It's pretty, pretty, pretty neat. Um, I designed this uh, first in my CAD program, like the, the basic shape. And then I took that shape into a program called, uh, uh, what the heck is that called? Um, ZBrush. And then in ZBrush, I was able to sort of do more of a sculpt, sculpting look to it. And then from that sculpt look, I was able to bring that into my CNC router, which was able to carve out a 3D, uh, the 3D um, uh, sculpture. So as you can see here, and then over here is a different. Over here, it has more like a a small. Uh, uh, well, that's a trilobite. Um, you can see in this this here detail of some elongated. I don't know what it is, but 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 I, I put that in there. It's hard to explain exactly what these things are. I mean, obviously, this is some kind of dinosaur, um, and I I also did it did the same thing on this side. So um, there's a dinosaur, and then uh, here's a a flying. Uh, what would you call that? I forget the name of it, but you but you know what it is. Uh, pterodactyl, that's what it's called. So it's a pterodactyl. Um, and then also this is where I'll be displaying some, some, some work from other people. Um, in the finish shop, I'll show you the front of that. So as you can see here, you'll be able to come in and see things on display. Also, also down here, as you can see, oh, sorry. Sorry about that, mate. Okay, so. So as you can see here, uh, here's uh, how the display is going to come out, and eventually there'll be there'll be pieces up here also that you'll peer through and see. But down here, I created I created this pattern, and I'm not sure whether you'll be able to get this on the camera, but let's take a look. So this is Darwin. This is uh, Lucy, sort of like a primate before uh, the Neanderthals. Uh, so you can see here there's a finch because he was uh, um, studying finches and the varieties of those finches. Uh, right here you can see the head of a tortoise with a long neck. That was from the Galapagos Islands. Also here is a, uh, they had, it was a flower that he was, he was, uh, studying also as far as uh, evolution goes and also this is the HSS Beagle that uh, that uh, he sailed to discover these awesome findings all right so over here uh, over here we have a, a, an old sink uh, of course I I also got that. I also got that used, uh, but you rarely see these. And I thought, man, that's such a nice sink. And so, uh, so I got that. Now, on to some other. I don't know. I guess you could call it uh, some of the stuff that I, I find interesting. So, um, right here is uh, <laughs> this really cheesy frame around. Uh, this uh, image of, I believe it's the Eagle Nebula, and what this is is a, a, a door 
that goes into uh, where the heating room is. So these, this is this has slats, so it allows the airflow to go in. And uh, this is also something that's that that I find so fascinating that humans are able to. I don't know, just just take radio frequencies and put it together in an image like they, they have here. Um, so awe-inspiring what we can do as, as humans and, and you kind of, anyways, you look around and what the hell's going on, you know? Uh, <laughs> anyways, so here's, here's the, the, one of the, the last things that I suppose I'll, I can show you other than, um, well, here goes the phone. All right, well, that was annoying. <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't, I shouldn't complain, it's a client. But uh, anyhow, uh, right here is uh, the last, one of the last things I did to sort of uh, separate the wall was uh, or separate the space out because eventually I want to have another two barber chairs right there on the other side I have two barber chairs and on this side eventually I have two barber chairs um, uh, but for now uh, I separated it with this uh, food truck uh, idea that I had so as you can see over here I have a popcorn machine and, and I'll have and uh, I'll have uh, other other food items over here, and then also the idea was to have like food for thought, like books and stuff like that. Um, and then I have it illuminated so it's kind of it's kind of festive, you know. Uh, uh, as you can see over here, it might be kind of dark, but uh, so this these these pieces I went to the junkyard and found here and here. I love this one here. It says Snap On. And then also, uh, once we're able to get back up and going after this coronavirus stuff, I'll be able to have some beers and stuff like that for people to, uh, to have. And this is how, and then basically you can go in through this, through this over here and get to the other side. So let me take a little look-see here. And then, as you can see, if you get a little closer, you have kind of more like a, the rust. Uh, now, this is all this is all fabricated mostly with uh, wood. Like this part here is wood, this part here is wood, and then I used over on this side I used a, a foam, and then I painted it. Um, and down here, I used my vacuum four machine to work on this wheel. So I cut this out uh, with uh, MDF. At first, and then vacuum formed uh, this this hub on there, and then these these pieces here are all 3D printed, and it looks pretty realistic. People come in, they're like, "Wow, that looks like a real truck." And then, uh, as you can see over here, you got the popcorn machine. Um, also, like some people might be like, "Hey, why do you have the why do you have the uh, the?" Um, why would you have the uh, uh, washing machine on display? Well, it's nice to see that things are getting done, you know. So I sort of just decided to leave to leave that out in the open so that you know you could you know see see that things are being washed and cleaned and stuff like that. Um, and above you here, you can see that I piled this in this uh, um, blue and white field thing going on. Um, and also I got this over here. You can see I, I got this guy here because I was just, the barbers actually used to be uh, doctors. I wouldn't trust me to do any kind of operation. I might take a mole off by accident, but, but for the most part, I try to stay outside <laughs> of, the, of the body. <laughs> so, um... I think that's about it. Um, other than like, as you can see here, uh, the ceiling 
has a variety of different things going on. Um, I, I made a crest, I designed a crest and made a stencil and then got up there and stenciled uh, the crest on there. Um, and uh, uh, we have a fishing pole up here that my dad collected years ago. I don't know whether it was ever used it or not, but it's really long. It's like a nine foot long, uh, or 10 foot long uh, uh, fly fishing rod. And uh, a lot of people are interested in those uh, fishing rods around here. A lot of people will collect them and stuff. So we get a lot of comments about that too. Uh, and that's about it. Everyone, thank you so much for watching. You know, th this was this was just sort of like a sp spontaneous kind of uh, video uh, we wanted to do. Uh, I, I I met Gary and he was so gracious to to to, to share his time with me to do this. And um, uh, but this really gave me the impetus to do something that's a little more polished eventually down the road. So. Thank you so much for watching. You guys take care out there and stop in for a haircut or if you have artwork you want to show me uh, that you want to display here, please come by and uh, also just come by and take a look. Thank you so much. Uh, take care uh, once again and see you later. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hello, I'm the English naturalist, geologist, and biologist Charles Robert Darwin. The producer wishes me to convey that the short cinematic presentation that you just watched was an unrehearsed dry run in which Dan made up the dialogue off the top of his head. So, it's no wonder that he appeared to flounder for a few words here and there, but I'm sure you agree that his was a good performance all the same. I'm told that the voltaic piles expired in the producer's apparatus and the recording of the dry run was all that could be had. Bloody unfortunate, but at least the producer recorded the dry run. In any case, please visit Dan at Harper's Barbershop and ask him about the origins of his evolutionary handiwork. Sorry, I couldn't help myself. Thank you, good day, and God save the Queen.